Hey everybody, Ritana here. Let's get right to the point. Um, last week, you remember, I started a new thing called... The, the top, top 5, five videos, videos of, of the, the week. week! This week, number one, remember this is no in no particular order, number one is Nature Footage the Musical. Number two is Cat vs. Printer. Number three is Draw With Me. Number four is Stalking Cat. Yes, two cat videos. And number five, The Gradual Mental Traumatization of a Kid's Show Host. That is The Gradual Mental Trauma Traumatization of a Kid's Show Host. I think you guys will like that one. <laughs> now, before we get into a discussion, I'm going to show you two things. One, we're selling Halloween stuff, um, and I was hoping that these wouldn't sell out very quickly because I was going to make stuff out of, um, I was going to buy one for me and then make stuff um, out of the others for, uh, went after it went on clearance and sell like headbands and stuff made out of them or something. People like them better than I thought, so there ended up only being three left, so I'm like, great. So much for that plan. I might as well just grab one now at full price. It's only two dollars, but I saw this, and it was probably the cutest spider. And note that I have arachnophobia, which is fear of spiders. Except I'm only afraid of spiders that are bigger than like a pinhead. Like if it's a tiny itty bitty spider, like the one that was living on Vegeta, um, I'm not afraid of that one. Uh, by the way, here's the picture of the spider living on Vegeta. Now, this has got to be the cutest thing I've ever seen. Note that you can tell how crappily manufactured it was. You can see the hot glue, and these are pipe cleaners, and you can see, like, the stuff and everything, but god damn, it is so cute. So I'm going to unravel it now. It's a little spider! That's so cute! <laughs> It's spider! It's so cute and fluffy! So, I I just had to get it because uh, it's so cute and fluffy. It looks like a little puppy with four legs and a... Okay, it's a spider, it's not a puppy, but still! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Second thing is, you know the whole caffeine thing that I went through, right? Yeah, I don't need to explain that anymore. Point is, I used to drink a lot of coffee. I can't even drink decaf. I was at the store and I was looking at every single decaf one. Each one said 99.7% caffeine free. So I went online and I looked up, is there such thing as 100% caffeine free coffee? They were like, no. So really the only decaffeinated thing that still has caffeine in it I can have is tea because it only has one to eight milligrams in it. And I can still have caffeine in like chocolate, which believe it or not has more than decaffeinated tea. So that's really the only time I actually have caffeine. But, let's face it, coffee alone just has a lot of caffeine in it, and last time I drank decaffeinated coffee, I got sick again. So, this is what I found on Google. Dun -dun 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 it is called Dandelion Coffee, and it is like herbal tea, only it's, it's, it's a coffee substitute. And it is naturally caffeine-free, and it, for those of you who are worried about gluten, it's gluten-free. And I got it from, it, it's pronounced Ticino. You find it. So if you are somebody who can no longer drink coffee for either caffeine reasons or gluten re free reasons, gluten reasons, gluten problems, gluten, <laughs> then go get yourself some dandelion coffee. I haven't tasted it yet, but I'm really excited. No caffeine. I like you. We're going to talk about customers inside retail stores. Okay, so like you know, I work in a Walgreens. And, um, I've encountered some pretty dumb things. Um, customers don't seem to be able to read at my store. And, I, you know, I don't really blame customers for doing this automatically. 
but at my store, if you're behind the register, the card slidey thingy, the slidey machine, is on our right. To a customer, it's on the left. There are three machines in the front, so three card things, each on their left, our right. It's not the best place to put a machine, but I was at a Michael's today, the machine was on the left, but the point is, is the, mach the registers are all together, so they automatically want to go to the machine that's on the next register, but uh, so we would point people, you know, it's actually this machine. Then our third register doesn't work anymore. It, the terminal broke down or something. So that machine obviously doesn't work. I like to be on the second register because it makes me feel shorter. It doesn't make me feel like it would be like, yeah. So um, I put a little sign on the broken machine that said, please use machine to the left. I had a little arrow. People still didn't get it. They kept either going over there, they would look at the machine with the paper on it and go, Oh, this one doesn't work? It doesn't say it doesn't work. It says go to the other one. It's like they glance at the white square, but they don't actually take time to read it. So they'll e either hand you the card or like look around bewildered. Like, is it up here? So then, a customer did the same thing, and I was like, you know, I don't really... You know, she was nice about it, too. She was like, oh, that's strange and I was like yeah I don't know how to make it clearer to people and she's like well why don't you write go to instead of use so I wrote please go to machine at the left of the register people still didn't get it people, it's like people who speak perfectly good English perfectly good looks at it and goes is this broken and it's like, n no, it's, it's this one over here. Oh! So, after that, I took a Sharpie. I wrote, please, in capital letters, go to, underline, the register, or the machine, at the left of the register, and I pointed an arrow to the machine they should use. Still, people can't seem to know how to read. I almost want to ask my boss if I could take a box and put it over that machine so that no one knows there's a machine there. It's the buy one get one half off we actually have trouble with. People will come up, say, say CoverGirl Cosmetics are buy one get one half off, which they almost always are. Somebody will come up and be like, that's, buy, uh, that's, uh, that's half off, right? I was like, it's buy one get one half off. And they're like, oh. Even though the tag says buy one get one half off so and then oh my god this one time what was it I don't even remember what his problem was there was a toy okay I think I remember what his logic was his logic so it was buy one get one half off it was um, a WWE wrestling figure his philosophy on it was if you buy one you get the one you bought for 50% off. Like, buy one, get one, 50% off. Buy the one, get the one, 50% off. So, all of us, we were kind of like, there were like three of us watching this, and we were like, he's stupid, and he got really mad about it, too. It's like, come on, people. And there are people, this one's really funny. There are people who come into Walgreens. I've had somebody give me, you know, we, we have our little newspaper circular things, you know, our store ads. I had somebody come up to the counter looking for a coupon through through a circular for the products that they were buying. Guess what circular it was? It was a Rite Aid one. Rite Aid newspaper. And I was like, I'm thinking, do you know where you, where you are? Did you because I'm, I'm kind of frightened if you if you don't know where you are and like when I say this is Walgreens they go oh I thought this was Rite Aid or people will come in they will like hang on let me give you my CBS card we don't have a card this is Walgreens oh I thought this was CVS now I can understand yes we're all pharmacies we're all competitions but 
on, people. We all start with different letters, R, C, and W. And there's a big sign outside that says Walgreens. There's a big W in a big window that says W on it. There's Walgreens ads and W's everywhere inside the store. Where do you think you are? Come on, people! And I'm not even going to talk about coupon ladies. Because that's just a whole nother level of ridiculous. I mean, I use coupons, but not as extensive. You know, if I need, you know, Morningstar or something. Oh, here's a dollar off of blah, blah, blah. Morningstar. Okay, I'll clip that one. I maybe clip three or four, five at the most coupons every couple of weeks. Because a lot of times there isn't even anything I need. These people find like 10 coupons for one floss. Who needs 10 floss? <gasps> oh my gosh, I'm sorry, excuse me. There was a lady who was buying like 20 bottles of barbecue sauce. You don't need that much unless are you donating it? Are you reselling it to other people? No, I think they're just doing it and we have these things called register rewards which are coupons that you can use on anything in your next purchase. We do it just to get those. And people try to double coupon. People try to give us expired coupons. I got somebody who tried to give me a coupon yesterday for a free, one free $25 American Express gift card. Yeah, you can guess it probably didn't work. I've had somebody, um, we sell Cottonelle for $5, and there was an in-store coupon for $1 off, so you get $4. Had a lady give me, she was buying three Cottonelle, she gave me three manufacturer coupons that you print off like off a website like uh, Smart Source or whatever. They were for $6 off one Cottonelle. We don't sell it for $6. So I looked at the pin, because the printed out coupons have a pin. They were all the same pin. They're supposed to be different. So, went to my manager and said, you know, are these real? And, you know, he knew they were fake. For whatever reason, he let one slide and then didn't let her uh, use the other two. But, you know, he was the store manager, so it was his decision. We have, every month, we have something that's called a suggestive sale. Say, we'll have, like, like this month we have Reese's and Hershey's for 69 cents or three for two dollars and we get five cents on our paycheck for each one we sell. So we have, have to ask every single customer. Every single one. Now some people understand that. Some people will say, you know, will be like, okay, Goldie Puss, this is Goldie Puss. Shake hands with Goldie Puss. So Goldie Puss is gonna be our customer. Usually, instead of saying, um, we have Hershey's and Reese's for uh, three for two dollars, I say we have them for 69 cents. Because if you say three for two dollars, sometimes it makes people feel obligated to buy three. When some, some people might only want to buy one. If they buy one, then I'll say, oh, they're three for two dollars. Because they're a dollar nineteen individually normally, so that's a really good price. Okay, so Goldie Puss is our little customer. I'll be like, hey, we got Reese's and Hershey's for 69 cents, and they go, oh, no, thank you. That's, that's good. Hey, we have Reese's and Hershey's for 69 cents. Why do you guys ask me that every time I come in? Oh, it's just part of our job. Hey, we have Reese's and Hershey's. No. Sorry. I just want to wait for that one day customer comes up. They're like, what do I have for Reese's? No, thank you. Okay, so is that going to be all for you? Yes, that's all. Okay, have a nice day. Don't tell me what to do. So I'll make sure to bring my camera when I go to San Francisco and I'll make a nice video. I'll bring it to the convention and stuff and I'll post that and you guys will see me sometime next week with another, another five, five top, top videos, videos of, of the week. week. forgot something so p.s. if if you know my DeviantArt or, I've, or you've seen things that I've made what would you buy from me if I sold something on Etsy something I make suggest something say something that I've made what would you buy from me tell me comment box do it do it so I can make stuff and I can make money what would you buy thank you good night